am so excited that you're here with us again today. We are going to use our imagination once again, and we're going to talk about an imaginary trip to the ocean or maybe the beach. Some of you may even be going this summer. But before we start using our imagination, Miss Connie is going to tell you a true story that really happened. It took place in an aquarium. Now, imagine a small aquarium that you may have in your house with some fish in it, and think about a huge one that is much, much larger, maybe even the size of your house. And it is in a faraway place that it happened in New Zealand. Now, we have an aquarium, some of you may have visited, in New Orleans. And they have wonderful sea creatures that live inside the glass with all the water in it. Sometimes there's sharks in there. Sometimes there's jellyfish. Sometimes there's octopus. There's all kinds of sea creatures that live there. So I'm going to share a little bit about a creature that's name was Inky, and he was an octopus. Inky was quite the adventurous octopus. They even nicknamed him Houdini because he could get in and out of places without people even realizing where he was. So I'm going to show, share this book with you. It's called Inky the Octopus, and it's based on a real-life aquatic escape. The author is Erin Gunsberg, and the illustrator, which you know, boys and girls, an illustrator does what? Draws all the wonderful pictures in a book. They do the artwork. And this happened in an aquarium in New Zealand. Of course, we see all the seaweed and the tentacles sticking out and a few little fish all around. Now, Inky was quite happy to have friends in the aquarium. He swam every day. He watched everything. But from the inside of the aquarium, he could see all the people and all the visitors that would come every day to come and visit him. And he often thought, I wonder what it would be like to be outside of my place that I live, outside of this aquarium. And he watched, as you can see, all the people coming in and out. Now one night, when the lights went out and all the workers went home, he decided it was time to take an adventure. He was really, really brave. Now he had thought about this for a long time. And he thought, how sad is it gonna to be to leave my friends? I don't know if I really wanna leave all my friends in this wonderful aquarium that I live in but I do want to see what's out in the big wide world. So once those lights went off, he saw it was his chance to make an escape. One of the workers had left a little bitty crack in the top part of where the drain part goes in. And he took those big old tentacles. Now I'm going to show you a picture. This is the real life picture of Inky. And he was quite a large octopus, but he wiggled those tentacles in and out. He squeezed his body inside a little bitty drain pipe, and before you know it, he had escaped. There he is again, he's looking out, trying to figure out, am I gonna make it or not? And he did. He came through this pipe right over here. See that little bitty hole? He flattened his body, and he was able to escape through that hole. So the next morning, the workers came in and guess what they found on the floor? Water. And they found tentacle tracks. And they thought, where did this come from? Something must have happened while we were gone and we were closed at night. And they started to investigate. And they watched the footage. And that's how they knew what happened to Inky and how he escaped into the great big ocean. See him right there? That's where he came out of. A pipe that looks just like this. And he was free at last. He was gone into the big ocean. And after that, they never saw Inky again. 
So, this is just one adventure of this special octopus that is a true story. When you have a true story, boys and girls, it is called nonfiction. It really happened. And there are books like this in the library. Then there's also fiction books. That means it's a made up story where dogs and animals talk and um, starfish sing. And those are called fiction books where they are make believe stories. Nonfiction is true stories that really happen. So if you come by the library, once we do open up and get back to normal and we won't be doing virtual any uh, longer, or you, for now, you can put them on request, have your moms put them on the request, and we can get you other books like this if you enjoy this story of Inky. All right, so I'm going to put this one right down here, and we're going to talk a little bit about other odd octopuses. Now, there's a plural form that you can use if you have more than one octopus. You can call them an oct octopi. That means they have more than one. We're going to look at this one. This one, her name was Flo. His name was Sid. And this one is Otto. Now, there are all types of varieties of octopi. There's not just one. There's many of them. Well, boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed hearing the story of Inky. I know I surely did. It's a lot of fun to go on imaginary adventures using books. Now, something else we're gonna to do today that's gonna to be a whole lot of fun is talk about seashells. Do you know this is Porta Misconi's seashell collection? When I go to the beach, I like to walk along the water shore and listen to the waves coming in. And you start digging in the sand. And there are all different kinds of seashells that you might find. There are small ones that are maybe this big, all the way to these big old conch shells that sometimes wash up if you're in Florida. So let me share some great information and you might become a seashell collector just like I do. All right, in this category we have bivalves. Now, do you see how they go together? By means two. And at one point in time, there was something living inside these seashells. And they have like a little suction. It stays really, really, really tight. And sometimes oysters live in bivalves. Um, clams are bivalves. And when they wash on shore, sometimes people find them and you open them up. And on the inside is where these little sea creatures live. Now, Bivalves comes in all different shapes. This one is beautiful. It has ridges in it. Look at this one, how colorful. And this is just how they come out of the ocean. There are different kinds of bivalves. In this book that we have, which is found here at the library, it talks about the whelk shell. That's this one right here. I don't know if you can see this really well, but Miss Connie has a whelk shell. Now this is part of the conch shell family. All these that are shaped like this, that have a spiral part and has a tip. Some of them have more tip, pointier tips than other. And when you put them up to your ears, it actually sounds like the ocean is happening on the inside of them. And these are all part of the conch shell family. They come in different sizes. This is a conch shell. It's a little bit different from the larger one. This one right here is also a conch shell. It's part of the whelk shell family. Do you see how the spots are different colors on it? This is a nautilus. Do you see how it has a circle? And that's part of the conch family. This is a nautilus shell. Look at this spiral one. He's also part of the conch family, but do you see how it's real pointy on the end? Little sea animals live in there when they're out in the ocean. And when divers find them or the waves wash them in, sometimes they're still inside their little houses here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about another super duper one. I bet you know what shape this is, boys and girls. Hmm, let's count it points. One, two, three, four, five. What does it look like? I bet you're thinking a star, a starfish, Miss Connie. And that's what it is. 
There's one that's been artificially colored here into purple and they put some glitter on him and he sparkles. So that's another type of seashells. Those are all starfish shells. They actually are preserved. Now, I didn't have any sand dollars left because those actually break apart after a while. But if you have sand dollars from the beach and they crack open, there's a little bitty star on the inside of them. And my mom always told me, make a wish upon that star. And guess what? It might come true. So those are all fun things you can do if you go to the beach. And if you don't go to the beach this summer, come to the library and get you some books when, once we open up, okay? Also, I'm going to show you this is a really cool one. I'm going to turn it over and this came from way down in the deep blue sea and it washed ashore and it's very very old when it first would wash up it would be very light in color and this is a sea anemone that has been you see how it's hard it's rubbed in the inside this would have been down way thousands of feet underneath the ocean so this is another cool one that I have in my collection. There are many other types of seashells, boys and girls, that we just talked about a few of them here. If your mom wants to read to you books about seashells, there's things in the adult section as well where they can share all kinds of great pictures. There's coral, there's all kinds of wonderful things that lived under the ocean. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about seashells today. Now you get to do a craft. Remember when your mom picked those bags for you? This is what you're going to have in those bags. It's called a crafty octopus. Hi boys and girls. Are you ready to make a crafty octopus with all of your great things, supplies that are inside your brown bags that went home? All right. These are the parts that were in your bag. You're going to have a body part. You're going to have four strips that we're going to make tentacles out of. And you're going to have a set of sticky eyes. All right, let's get started. You're going to need your markers of any colors or if you have colors at home or if you have paint at home. But we're going to demonstrate using colorful beach color markers today. You can decorate your bodies however you want. You can color them all in or you can make squiggly marks on them or you can do whatever you want. You can make a rainbow octopus if that's what you want to do today. It's your art project. You decide. Once you have him decorated the way that you want your octopus to look like, then you get out your two sticky eyes. They're onto a little slip, slip of paper and you put them onto your octopus. You're going to take your four strips, use your fingers, and roll them up to make his tentacles all curly. Take your time now and go one by one and you have them all set to get ready to be attached onto your octopus's body. Turn your octopus body over and you're going to take your glue stick and you're going to put plenty of glue on the back of him. Now attach your octopus tentacles one at a time until you have all four of them attached. Once you've attached all of the pieces to make your octopus, you can see your creation. I hope you enjoyed having fun with us. We sure enjoyed you joining us today. See you next time.